Hi everyone, my name is Katie Wynn, and today I will walk you through my technical writing internship at Q2. And more about me. I started the Professional and Technical Communication Master's Degree program in January 2022 because I enjoyed the tech comm courses I took as an undergraduate. I also wanted to pursue a meaningful career and make an impact with my work. And so I chose this degree program to continue developing my writing and technology skills by making information more usable, concise, and easy to understand for users. To start, I'll provide context behind my internship journey. In January 2023, I applied to Q2's technical writing internship posting I saw on LinkedIn. A few weeks later, I received an email requesting for an interview. In February, I was scheduled for a panel interview with four members of the technical writing team. Exactly one day after the interview, I received a phone call from a recruiter offering me a position as a technical writing intern for the summer. Fortunately, I finished all of my graduate classes and this segued nicely into the internship in May 2023. To give context, Q2 is a financial experience company that offers digital banking and lending services to financial institutions and small businesses. Q2 is also headquartered in Austin, Texas. As for me, I am part of the technical writing team, and the team consists of eight writers, including me. While the team is fully remote, I report in office three to four times a week in Austin, Texas. I also have the unique opportunity to work in office and learn that this year's cohort was more selective than last year, with only one intern assigned to each team. As for my job duties, my role as a technical writing intern consists of many tasks that involve researching, writing, editing, and using various software and tools to produce documents. I work with subject matter experts to create new documentation. In addition, I also attend weekly intern learnings to build my skills and participate in volunteer events to give back to the community throughout the summer. Overall, my manager emphasizes my job to learn as an intern here at Q2. Furthermore, the technical writing team uses software and tools such as Madcap Flare to create, author, and publish documents. Confluence is used to research and compile information into a single space. It is also used as a place to create, organize, and discuss work as a team. Jira is also used for project management, tracking tickets, and sprint planning. In addition, we also use Bitbucket and Git for team collaboration. For communication, we use Outlook, Teams, and Zoom. Other tools we use include OneNote, and that is used for note-taking when meeting with product owners or subject matter experts. For the summer, I was tasked to complete four major projects. My first project involves creating a package extension overview for address management and retail enrollment extensions. Package extensions is an all-catch term for a product's features and services. I created product overviews to explain the basic features or services for financial institutions so they know what to expect when they buy a Q2 product or extension. For the address management extension, my mentor and I met with a product owner to discuss the overview, features, integrations, and scope of the service. I also viewed a JIRA ticket about the service and referenced any documents the product owner created to develop the product overview. To begin this process, I referenced the Address Management Confluence page to gather more information. I also referenced supporting documents the product owner provided in the JIRA ticket 
and built the overview based on what the product owner suggested we should include. After gathering information for the document, I created a new Flare project folder for address management. I rewrote information to meet Q2 style guide and accessibility requirements. Next, I created a table of contents for the document. I made sure to update file information such as the title and version number. Once the overview PDF output is created, I open it in Adobe Acrobat to check for basic accessibility issues. Adobe isn't perfect, but it does check for any obvious accessibility concerns. Finally, the document is sent back to the product owner for review. The document also undergoes peer review by another technical writer before it is finalized for publication. I then document the product overview in a shared Excel file. The second project I have been working on relates to release notes. Specifically, I will research what current literature suggests about how the technical writing team approaches release notes within the context of industry and genre standards. In addition, I worked with my manager to deploy a Qualtrics survey to internal Q2 users, asking about their experiences with Q2 release notes. We received over 40 responses for the survey, and I will analyze user feedback for release notes improvements. Based on current research and survey feedback, I identified four focus areas for release notes, writing style, content, organization, and distribution. I then informed the technical writing team how to create targeted and informative release notes for users. As for the third project, I helped the technical writing team with a UUX overhaul initiative to revamp an online help based on a 2019 PDF. My role is to conduct usability testing on the user-facing side and to provide feedback whether the interface design is intuitive or if the content itself is useful. I identified five focus areas to improve the online help's information architecture, redesign the front page to increase help article discoverability, restructure help articles to include interactive media, provide additional resources for users, and develop a uniform style across all online help articles. The fourth project includes me working with my mentor and a product owner to create new smart slash pendo integration user guides. As I reflect about my experiences, here are some of my main takeaways so far. Here, I listed a few courses I thought were useful to me. Digital literacies exposed me to industry software such as Madcap Flare. Because I was familiar with Flare, I believe this gave me an advantage during the interviewing process. Editing technical documents helped me create concise writing and to edit my work for quality assurance. Next, tone and voice introduced me to company style guides, the importance of tone and voice, and writing in plain language. However, I believe all of the courses in this program helped prepare me for my role. As for challenges and what I learned, this is my first eight to five job and learning to adjust to it took some time. Luckily, I've always used planners and calendars to effectively manage my time. It's also easy to forget to take breaks. So I recommend scheduling 15 minute breaks into your calendar to remind yourself to look away from the screen and to clear your mind for a bit. Working with a remote team. Due to my hybrid nature of my internship, I was concerned about communication issues. Fortunately, having a remote team didn't prevent us from effectively communicating. To work around this, the team schedules weekly Zoom syncs and communicates regularly through Teams. I also have weekly one-on-one -on -one syncs with my manager and mentors, and these syncs help me prepare for the upcoming week. 
In addition, I could also ask questions to clarify tasks or any concerns that I have. Next, asking questions is important. In addition, ask questions when you don't understand something. For me, it's difficult to ask for help because I prefer to do things by myself. But there are benefits to using resources such as your mentors, managers, or coworkers. Asking for help moves you along the process instead of wasting time on a problem. If you can't resolve a problem in 30 minutes, either stop and work on something else or ask for help. Asking questions shows curiosity and proactiveness. And lastly, managing your time carefully. Time management is crucial for your success as an intern. Use your calendar to schedule meetings and block out time for work. It's also easy to feel overwhelmed, but remember to break down your work into blocks and tackle them one by one. Remember, even small progress is still progress. If I could change one aspect of my internship, I wish I could have spent more time learning about the other teams, what they do, and the products that they work with. And since I'm new to the fintech industry, I also wish I could have attended more informative meetings to expand my knowledge on Q2's products and to learn more about fintech in general. In conclusion, be strategic about your time and work because you are an intern for a limited amount of time. Take advantage of resources such as your manager, mentors, coworkers, software, or learning materials. Don't forget to build meaningful connections so you have references and make sure to document your projects and successes for your portfolio or resume. And as always, be open to learning and don't be afraid to make mistakes or ask for help. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time and take care.